This is Jared Horak, and this is my latest Road to the 2023 Kentucky Oaks recap video. And in this video, I will recap the Gulfstream Park Oaks and the Fantasy Stakes. Both of those races were run on Saturday, April 1st. Now, I've done recaps for all of the Kentucky Oaks points races from the first one, and I'm going to go all the way to the last one. So in my final recap video, I'll recap the Ashland Stakes, the Gazelle, the Santa Anita Oaks, and the Beaumont Stakes. Those are the final four Kentucky Oaks 2023 points races. Now, if you're interested in my annual Kentucky Derby Day full card at Churchill Downs, you'll find that later this spring at therunawayhorse.com on my sales page. You'll be able to purchase Kentucky Derby, Preakness, and Belmont Stakes Day full cards. I have a Triple Crown package as well. Uh, for Kentucky Oaks Day, I'm going to cover all of the stakes races for Kentucky Oaks Day, uh, including extensive analysis of the 2023 Kentucky Oaks. So go over to therunawayhorse.com on my sales page for more details on all of those products. And now we'll recap the two races uh, from April 1st, beginning with the Gulfstream Park Oaks. And that was at Gulfstream Park at a mile and a 16th. It was a grade two race. Now Miracle was your two to one favorite for, for trainer Todd Pletcher. She was exiting a clear runner up finish in the Rachel Alexandra stakes at fairgrounds. But in that race, uh, she was able to get out there and control the pace. The pace was slow. Pretty Mischievous was able to out finish Miracle that day and they were well clear of the rest. But when you looked at the paper race this time, it did look like she wasn't going to be able to get out there and control the pace. And that was the case. She wasn't able uh, to end up uh, doing that in this race. It was Flakes, uh, a 30 to one long shot breaking from the inside post that was able to get out there and set the pace. Now, Infinite Diamond, and then from the outside post, Darth Vader were chasing the pace. And then Affirmative Lady for trainer Graham Motion. Uh, she was in a nice spot in mid-pack in the eight horse field. Now, Affirmative Lady was able to uh, move forward. Uh, the pace didn't keep going, although some of the forwardly placed runners did run okay. Flakes hung in there, and then Dorth Vader made a big run. And Infinite Diamond was finished at that point, and it looked like Dorth Vader was going to win. Actually took the lead, uh, but the uh, just couldn't get the mile and a 16th distance. That was the question with this one. Looked best around one turn, looked really good in a one-turn mile up prior to this race but just wasn't able to see out that mile and a 16th around two turns. And she got tired late. Flakes got tired as well. An affirmative lady uh, was able to pull clear, get past those runners and win by a couple lengths. Now, Sacred Wish uh, rallied from eighth place to ended up finishing second. And then Flakes uh, did finish third over Darth Vader. And uh, a couple other horses in there to mention. Atomically was my top choice. Uh, I, I thought that she would offer more value and the other Todd Pletcher runner, Miracle, and uh, she did, but she just never picked her feet up and didn't run. And then just Catherine also ran, and Miracle just never got involved either. Uh, so looking overall at the strength of this Kentucky Oaks points race, I think Affirmative Lady does have some talent for Grand Motion. She's got a nice pedigree. She's a daughter of Arrogate, but she's one that should con continue to develop, and I know that she's going to like the mile and an eighth distance of the Kentucky Oaks, uh, but at this point she's not fast enough uh, to win a race like that. Louis Saez was aboard and expect that, she, that he'll end up possibly riding her back in the Kentucky Oaks. So she's one that has a lot of upside still. And I think later this year, she's going to be good, but I'm just not quite sure that, uh, that she's going to be good enough to jump up and run fast enough uh, on the first Saturday, uh, first Friday in May uh, to win the Kentucky Oaks. Now the fantasy stakes at Oaklawn Park on Saturday, April 1st, your heavy favorite in there was wet paint. And this one for Brad Cox and Flavian Pratt, and she had been dominating the races at Oaklawn Park, the Kentucky Oaks points races there. The Martha Washington Stakes, it was a wet track. She rallied from the back of the pack to win. The Grade 3 Honey Bee Stakes, same thing. She rallied from the back of the, of the pack on a wet track, and she won that one easily as well. And now the Fantasy Stakes uh, was a fast track, but it was a lot of the same horses that she'd already defeated. And in this race, um, Grand Love was able to get out there and set the pace, and that's what it looked like. It looked like she would be one that would be forwardly placed, but she really hasn't developed from age two to three uh, for trainer Steve Asmussen. And she ended up fading and finishing fifth in this race. Now, Wet Paint was able to sit back in 10th and last, and she passed them all. And she was able to win easily by two and a half lengths. A nice patient ride by Flavian Pratt. She does have a nice late kick. Now, Taxed, a 33 to one long shot, was able to to work out a decent mid-pack trip, and she ended up finishing second. And then Olivia Twist was the longest shot in the, on the board at 50-1. to 1. She ended up third. Condensation from the outside post. Uh, she chased the pace, and she was fourth. 
And as I mentioned, Grand Love weakened to fifth. Some other runners, uh, Pate, Toehead, my top choice, uh, a, a long shot. Uh, I thought that Toehead would set a nice inside stalking trip. She did. She just wasn't good enough in the stretch. And then other runners there, Take Charge, Brianna, Royal Spa. Uh, she's looking lucky. Uh, the final time was 144.08. Uh, Wet Paint continues to run a little bit faster in each race. I like her pedigree. She has excellent con uh, connections with Brad Cox and Flavian Pratt. Um, but I'm just not sure how good she really is. We're going to find out in the Kentucky Oaks. She hasn't run uh, the Oaks distance yet. Uh, I just thought that she kept beating the same field in Arkansas, and uh, she's a big closer, and you're going to have a 14-horse field in the Kentucky Oaks, and I don't know how much pace we're going to have. We're going to see how, if it sets up for her. Obviously, based on her Oaklawn Park form, she would be a Kentucky Oaks contender, but we'll have to see. Uh, based after we see the whole field, uh, what the pace scenario looks like and if she's going to be able to close and win a race like that. I have my doubts at this point. Uh, she could take a decent amount of money, uh, but uh, Affirmative Lady and Wet Paint winning those races on April 1st, they're both quality off the pace types with some upside and, and they're both in sharp form heading into the Kentucky Oaks. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you like this content. And I'll be back and I'm going to be doing uh, more Kentucky Oaks and Kentucky Derby points race recaps on the road to the Oaks and Derby for 2023 as we get closer to both of those races. And until I see you next time, good luck at the race.